Hallelujah. Well, praise God. I want to thank everyone for being here this morning. I want to let you know we love you. We appreciate you being here. Amen. God is good and his mercy endures forever. And um, I'm Pastor Terrence Turner. This is my wife and co-pastor, Dr. Avis Turner. And we're, we just want to welcome you here to Faith Country Holiness Church of Gallatin as we um, celebrate Thanksgiving. And this is a Thanksgiving celebration. Thanksgiving for all you've done. Thanksgiving for all you've done. Thanksgiving unto God. You've given us your son. Thanksgiving for all you've done. Thanksgiving for all you've done. Thanksgiving for all you've done. Thanksgiving unto God. You've given us your son. For all you've done Unto you, Lord, we dedicate the season For we know in our hearts that you are the reason For all the good that comes in our lives Comes down from the Father of lies And we thank you, Lord for all you've done, Thanksgiving for all you've done, yeah. Thanksgiving for all you've done. Thanksgiving unto God, you've given us your son. Thanksgiving for all you've done. Lord, we dedicate the season, but we know in our hearts that you are the reason, for all the good that comes in our lives, comes down from the Father of lies, and we thank you Lord for all you've done, for all the good that comes in our lives. Comes down from the Father of lies, for all the good that comes in our lives. Comes down from the Father of lies, for all the good that comes in our lives. Comes down from the Father of lies, and we thank you, Lord, for all you've done. Hallelujah. And that's why we're here today, to give him thanks. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Give God thanks. How many has God been good to you? You know he's been good to you. Amen. How many has, has he made a way for you? Amen. How many has he made a way for you and he's opened doors for you? He's saved your life. He's sustained you. He's kept you eating. Um, amen. And he's kept you with clean water to drink, clothes to wear. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Well, I wanted to leave you with a word this morning, a, a word of faith to encourage you concerning this Thanksgiving season. And you know, the scripture, it lets us know that God's house, it is the house where you receive the word of God and you receive the faith of God. And so if you would turn with me, uh, Luke chapter 17 Luke chapter 17, and we're going to, I'm going to look at verse 11 through 19. And first of all, I want to, again, thank everyone and say happy Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving Day. Thanksgiving Day is about being thankful for all the things that God has done for us all year long. And so Thanksgiving Day is about being thankful for all the things that God has done for us all year long. It's about looking back and rejoicing for his goodness. It's about looking back on the year and looking back on your life 
and being thankful for all that he has done and all the goodness of the Lord. Now, we know that sometimes many people may spend a lot of their year and a lot of their time complaining about life. You know, complaining about this, complaining about that, complaining, uh, dwelling up on their problems. But Thanksgiving is an opportunity for us to, with a definite decision, to be thankful. Now, we all have problems. We all have problems, and we all have circumstances that are not favorable. We all have circumstances that are not favorable or ideal. You know, that's, somebody say, that's life. That's life right? I'm saying life is not ideal all the time. Yet we can also look back and see the hand of God. We can also look back and see the hand of God working in every aspect of our lives. If we, if we would look back and we would really pay attention to our life, we could see the hand of God working in every aspect of our lives. If it wasn't for the Lord, if it wasn't for the Lord, and his good hand on our life. None of us would be here today. How many can testify that? I know I wouldn't. I I wouldn't have made it out of childhood if it wasn't for the Lord. I, I wouldn't have made it out of childhood if it wasn't for the Lord. How many know that the devil will try to stop you when you're a little child? And if it wasn't for the grace of God, you know, the angels of the Lord, that's why the angels of the Lord are encamped round about his people. And, and the Bible talks about God has angels that watch over his little children because there are so many threats to try to stop you even before you can grow up. And so as we look back over our life, we have so much to be thankful for. If it wasn't for the Lord, we wouldn't have had food to eat. You know, just the basics. We sang a song earlier about daily living. It had a children's story called uh, Regular Old Blessings. Regular Old Blessings. It was about the little boy. He wasn't being thankful for food to eat or his little tennis shoes that he had. He, he said to his granddad, oh, man, that's, all, that's just regular old blessings. That's just regular old blessings, like shoes to wear. Those regular old blessings. I want something, something big, something dramatic. But if it wasn't for those regular old blessings, we wouldn't be able to make it, like food to eat, you know, and water to drink. And, you know, if you're a child or even, even if you're an adult, milk, you know, milk to drink. If it wasn't for the Lord, we wouldn't have had clean drinking water. You know, these are things that we can be thankful for. We wouldn't have clothes to wear. You know, we'd be naked and destitute because there are many people in parts of the world that are, you know. And so we have so much to be thankful for at this time. Many of us wouldn't have gotten a basic education, just a basic education, you know, just a basic education in the United States to be able to get a basic education for free. You know, many people don't even take advantage of it. They don't study or whatever. But, you know, that's a blessing. Somebody said, well, that's a regular old blessing. But that regular old blessing is something that somebody didn't get or may not be able to get. And so we have uh, so many reasons to be thankful. We may not be able to work and take care of ourselves if it wasn't for the goodness of the Lord. So if it wasn't for the good hand of the Lord, if it wasn't for the good hand of the Lord on our lives, we may have some reasons to complain, but he's been good to all of us. I know he's been good to me and he's been good to every person in here. And so each one of us, we can honestly say that God has been good to each of us and we can praise him if we only will. We can praise him if we only will. You know, we should make praise and thanksgiving a regular part of our life. And you don't have to record an a, a album, you know, a CD to, to praise the Lord. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Your joyful noise, if you're from the southern uh, someplace, you may say, yeehaw, thank you, Jesus. You know, that may be your joyful noise, or however your joyful noise, or hallelujah, you know, but giving God the praise for his goodness because the Lord has been good to each one of us. And so, you know, the question that I want to ask today, you know, many people, they spend so much time complaining, but the question I want to ask is, will you be the exception? That's the name of this message today, will you be the exception? You know, because so many people spend so much time complaining, but you can wake up in the morning, you have two choices. You can wake up complaining or you can wake up singing. 
You know, you can say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You can wake up with that mindset or that determination that I'm going to be happy today. I give God the praise. I look outside. I see the sun shining. I, I have eyes to see. I'm going to give God praise. I can go to the refrigerator and get me some water or some orange juice or whatever. I'm going to give God praise. I got clean underwear and clean socks. I'm going to give God praise. I got soap to take me a bath and hot water to take me a, a bath. I'm going to give God praise. You know, I got my activity of my limbs. I'm going to give God praise. Will you be the exception? Or will you be like someone who complains all the time and don't think about those regular old blessings? Now, in regard to praising the Lord daily, that's the question. Will you be the exception? Will you choose to praise the Lord? You know, you have to choose. We always have a choice. There was a gentleman that was in a Nazi concentration camp, and he said, the only thing and the last thing that they could not take from me was my right to choose my attitude. All the pain, all the suffering, all the deprivation, but you could choose your attitude. You could choose. Joy is a choice. Joy is a choice. And so we all have a choice. We can wake up in the morning praising him, or we can wake up complaining about what we don't have. Now, in Luke 17, verse 11 through 19, Luke 17, verse 11 through 19, we'll see an illustration of a man that chose to be the exception. He chose to be the exception in regards to being grateful for God's abundant blessings in his life. He chose to be the exception. Uh, many people, they often ask for God's blessings, and then when they receive the blessing, they just keep on going like nothing ever happened. They just keep on going. They don't commit to God. And so there's something missing on the inside of that type of person where they can ask God for blessing. You know, a lot of times many people get incarcerated and they'll have a life turnaround in jail or in prison and they'll turn around. But when they get out, they don't want to keep following God's path because they didn't commit on the inside enough to have a faithful spirit. Or, you know, people have this light bill due or that gas bill due or that mortgage payment. They need that mortgage payment. Lord, I'm, I'm praying that you make a way, Lord. I, I'm asking you to make a way for us, Lord. And then the Lord come through with a miracle blessing right on time, just enough to pay that light bill or to pay that gas bill or to pay that house payment or that rent. And that person, they'll, they'll be hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for a little while. But then again, they may not be on time for church. They may start missing church after the, the happy time has gone away because there's something missing of faithfulness in the spirit. Are you committed to God? Are you just receiving the blessing and then running on alone? And so will you be the exception? This man, he will show us how to be the exception and show gratefulness for God's goodness and mercy. So Luke chapter 17, Luke chapter 17, we're going to look at verse 11 through 19. It says, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village there met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So they were in a bad situation. Have mercy on us. Verse 14, and when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were clean. They, they were following the command. They were following the command because he gave them, he gave them a commandment to bring about a miracle healing in their life. They were in a desperate situation. They were lepers. The flesh was falling off their bodies and corroding and falling off their bodies. And they were in a desperate situation. They were ostracized from society. 
Yet they saw Jesus passing through. They saw a miracle man passing through and they called on Jesus and they said, have mercy on us. And Jesus gave them the commandment, go, show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. So as they went, they were cleansed. They obeyed the commandment and they acted in faith. And because Jesus was authorized to heal, they obeyed the word of Jesus. The Bible tells us over in Romans 10, 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so we are the just, the just shall live by faith. And so they receive faith because Jesus gave the word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So Jesus gave the word, go, show yourself unto the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed because the word released the faith or the power of if they acted upon the word to release the healing, Jesus was authorized. And so he spoke a word of faith, an authoritative word, and he released the power to heal them. And they obeyed. So they had an act of faith and they received healing as they went. Verse 15 of Luke 17. And one of them, and one of them, the name of the message is, will you be the exception? Will you be the exception? And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. In other words, he wasn't even a church going person. He was a Samaritan. He wasn't even a Jewish person that followed the law and going to the synagogue and things like that. He was a Samaritan. But he was an exception because he had something on the inside of him that told him that this man has delivered me from a desperate situation. I've got to go back. There's an honor on the inside of me. I've got to go back and honor this from which I've got this blessing. And he says in verse 16, and he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Verse 17, and Jesus answering said, were there not 10 cleansed? The question is, will you be the exception? He said, were there not 10 cleansed? But where are the nine? All of them got cleansed. As they went, they obeyed the word and they got cleansed. But only this one that was the exception decided to come back, fall down on his face and worship Jesus. He became a worshiper of God and he gave him thanks. He said, but where are the nine? Verse 18, they are not found that return to give God the glory, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Thy faith hath made thee whole. They were cleansed, all of them were cleansed, but he said, Thy faith hath made thee whole. Now, notice that these men were all in a desperate situation. These men were all in a desperate situation. We all started off, each one of us, we all started off in a desperate situation because of sin. We all started off in a desperate situation because of sin. We were born into sin. Each one of us were born into sin because of the first, the first man and woman that sinned. When they sinned, sin got in the blood of humankind. And as every person that was born after the first man and woman, they had sin in their blood, the nature of sin, the sin nature. And so if it wasn't for Jesus that came, he came to break the curse of sin off of us so that we wouldn't be bound to sin any longer. And it's by faith, if we believe what Jesus did and accept his free gift of salvation, we're delivered from the curse of sin. Now, Romans, turn to Romans, Romans 3, 
and we're going to look at verse 23 through 25 because it lets us know that we were all tainted by the leprosy of sin. See, just like that leprosy was destroying the, the bodies of those lepers, and it was incurable. It was nothing that they could do. It separated them. It separated them from society. Our sins separated us from God because God is holy. God is holy. He's pure. He's holy. And there is no sin or darkness in him. Our sins separated us from God. And so we were all tainted by the leprosy of sin. The corruption of sin had infected us all. The corruption of sin had infected us all. And only through the blood of Jesus are we saved. So look at Romans 3, and we're going to look at verse 23 through 25. Romans 3, verse 23 through 25. It says, For all have sinned. So that's all of us. We're all in the same bucket. We're all in the same bucket. That's why nobody can boast. Nobody can be better than anybody else. Whether you're rich, whether you're poor, no matter what race you're from, your ethnicity, where you come from, what part of town, we all was in the same bucket. If it wasn't for Jesus, we'd all be going to hell. If we haven't accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that's the destiny for everyone. But here's the scripture, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We came short of the standard of God, God's standard. Come short of the glory of God. No matter, you could be someone who could do the long jump. You may be an Olympic star in life, but you still come short of God's glory. Or you could be a little old lady just kind of moving along, but you still come short if you jump, try to meet God's standard, because we all come short. But here's the good news, verse 24, being justified. So we came short, but this is what Jesus did, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So we were justified, all of us, because we all came short. God did this for us. He justified us freely. He justified all of us freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 25, whom God has set forth for propitiation through faith in his blood. So it's through faith. So it's through faith in what the blood of Jesus that when we were falling short, Jesus made up the gap. He filled up the gap for us so that we can get back to God through faith in his blood. So it says, whom God have set forth as a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. And so Jesus' blood made up for all of us. So the only way for any of us to be saved is through the blood of Jesus. Yet there are many that have partaken of the goodness of God and continue to still walk in their own way. They may have gotten born again, but they continue to walk in their own way. In this example, this man, he chooses to be an exception in regards to being thankful for God's goodness to him. And that's the question today. Will you be the exception? Will you be the exception? So just like us, each of the 10 lepers, they were in need. They all needed Jesus. And we all need Jesus. Somebody say, I need Jesus. <laughs> I need Jesus. Amen. And so they all needed Jesus. And so they all cried out to Jesus when their problem got too bad that there was no hope. They all cried out to Jesus when their problem got too bad that there was no hope. They saw hope coming down the road. They saw hope coming their way through Jesus. And they reached out to seize that hope. And Jesus willingly healed them. So they reached out to seize that hope and Jesus willingly healed them. He gave them a divine command. The divine command was go show yourselves to the priest. Go show yourself to the priest. 
So Jesus gave them a command to do an act of faith. Again, we understand that Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when Jesus gave the command, faith came to release what they needed and they acted in faith. They acted in faith. They all responded to the command and the act of faith and they received their healing as they went to the priests. Now, look at Ephesians, look at Ephesians 2, hallelujah, look at Ephesians 2, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, because when God gives a word and you act on the word, whether it's for salvation, for healing, for finance, God will respond to your faith. God responds to faith. So you see certain people, they do things by faith. They get things done by faith. In other words, faith is believing in your heart, confessing with your mouth, but it's also acting on what you believe. So that's faith. And so you put substance to your faith. Now, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 says, for by grace are you saved. So grace is God doing something for you that you couldn't do for yourself. It's God's free gift, free gift to you and I. So it's a free gift. For by grace are you saved through faith. So it's still through faith. The free gift was given. The grace for you to be saved was given. Jesus died on the cross for all of us. God raised him from the dead so that we all could be saved. We looked earlier where that he's freely given us. He's justified us freely through Jesus. The blood of Jesus was shed. We don't have to die for our own sins. Jesus died for our sins. The debt has been paid. And so verse eight of Ephesians two says, for by grace you are saved. Grace is God's free gift. You are saved through faith. So here the act of faith is you believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth the Lord Jesus. You say, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that God raised you from the dead. I accept you as my Lord and Savior, and you are saved by faith. The grace is a free gift. The faith is your accepting it. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God not of works, lest any man should boast. So it's not through works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship. In other words, God already has a plan for you. God already has a plan for me. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto or for, or for the purpose of good works, which God hath before ordained. He's already ordained. He's already authorized that we should walk in them. So God already has a good plan for you. He's already has a good plan for us. And so when we accept his plan by faith and we act in faith by confessing him as Lord and Savior, we receive automatically salvation. So salvation is automatic by faith, if you accept it by faith. If you respond to the word of faith that's preached, salvation, you will instantly be saved. So you and I are saved by grace or the goodness of God through us simply responding to God, responding to God in faith by believing the gospel, by believing the gospel and confessing Jesus as our Lord and Savior. What is the gospel? The Bible lets us know in John 3, 16 through 17, for God so loved the world that's all of us. We were all in the same basket. We were all in the same bucket. We were all needing, we all came short. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, wherever you're from, whoever you are, whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Should not perish eternally, having eternal separation from God in a place called hell should not perish in poverty in the earth, 
should not perish in sickness and disease because Jesus took our sickness and disease by his stripes we were healed so we should not perish in that way should not perish in our finances because Jesus became poor that we might be made rich should not perish should not perish in depression for the joy of the Lord is our strength so for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What is everlasting life? It's the God quality of life. It's God's life. You're going to have God's life in you. God's quality of life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. So God didn't send Jesus into the world to condemn anybody. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved because we were all in the same bucket. So he sent his son so that all of us could be saved freely. Quickly look at Romans 10. Romans 10. Hallelujah. Romans 10. Look at Romans 10 verse 8 through 13. Romans 10, verse 8 through 13. And we're looking at, will you be the exception? Will you be the exception? As we celebrate Thanksgiving and being thankful, will you be the exception? But we want to show you these are some things that you gain that we all can take advantage of because God made it available for all of us. Salvation. So Romans 10, 8 through 13, it says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So the word, the commandment. See, Jesus gave the command to the lepers, go show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Just like that. He gave the authoritative word, they received faith, they acted on the word, and as they went, they were cleansed. So the word of faith for salvation is the same way. As the word is going forth even this morning, letting you know that God so loved you, God so loved me, that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, on the cross, that we just believe on him, that he's the son of God, and God raised him from the dead for our sins, we accept him, we can be saved. Well, that word is nigh, you and I. Verse 9 of Romans 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, this is how we get saved, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, confess that he is Lord, I confess you as my Lord and Savior, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead for my salvation. Jesus died on the cross and God raised him from the dead for me to be saved. I believe it and I accept him as my Lord and Savior. Verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession it's made unto salvation. So with your heart you believe that and you become right with God unto righteousness and then with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Your confession is your act of faith. So your believing is one thing, but then your confession is your act of faith in regards to getting saved. Your confession is your act of faith. That's your act of faith that releases you from darkness to light by saying, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe God raised him from the dead, and I accept him as my Lord and Savior. That's your act of faith to become saved. Verse 11, for the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. By you believing in Jesus, you will not be made ashamed. You won't be disappointed. You won't be disappointed, but you will get just what you said. Just like those lepers, Jesus said, go show yourself unto the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Same with salvation. You believe the gospel, you believe the word that's preached and you call on him, you will not be disappointed. You will be saved. 
and it's whosoever will. Whosoever will. Verse 12, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. In other words, there's no difference amongst races. It says the Jew and the Greek, but there's no difference amongst races, what race you come from. It's not one group of people's religion or not, or Jesus is not just for some group of people compared to another group of people. Jesus is the only name given whereby we must be saved. For all people, for us to be saved. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord, he's Lord. For the same Lord over all is rich. He's plentiful in mercy. He's rich unto all that call upon him, whoever that calls upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Those lepers, they were lepers. They were outcasts. But they saw Jesus passing through and they called on him and they received their healing. So we see God will save and deliver anyone. God will save and deliver anyone who responds to him in faith. God will save and deliver anyone who responds to him in faith. God will respond to your act of faith. So in regard to salvation, your act of faith is calling on him and confessing him as Lord and say, and, and say, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that God raised you from the dead. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. That's your act of faith for salvation. And he will respond to your act of faith with his free gift of grace. It's a free gift. That grace includes salvation. So that grace includes salvation healing, prosperity, peace, and help with your family, on your job, and whatever you need, that grace is available for every area of life. That's eternal life. If you act in faith, if you act in faith by calling on him, or coming to church, or giving an offering, whatever your act of faith may be, God will respond to your act of faith. I'm going somewhere with this. I want you to, uh, because we're looking at, will you be the exception? However, as we look back on the story of the 10 lepers, we will see something unique about the leper that came back to say thank you. So turn back to Luke 17. Luke chapter 17, and we're going to look at verse 11 through 19 again. Again, the name of the message is, will you be the exception? Will you be the exception? Will you be the exception? Luke 17, 11 through 19. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers which stood afar off. So they were separated. They were separated because they were lepers. They stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Well, the scripture says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. These 10 lepers, they call, and as they went, they were cleansed. Verse 15 of Luke 17, and one of them, and one of them, and one of them, out of 10, one of them, will you be the exception? And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. In other words, he wasn't even one of the Jews. He wasn't even one of the church people. But he had something on the inside of him that he felt that I have to honor this man for what he's done for me. He saved my life. He delivered me from being an 